We're here at the Waldorf Astoria for Couture Fashion Week, and we have Sai here, one of the designers that went on this evening. What was your inspiration uh, for my collection this evening? My collection name is called Geometry of Love. So the inspiration came like being studying maths and the different uh, signs and you know shapes. shapes and everything. So that's how you, know, you can see all my outfits. Oh, There's like shapes in it of the cones and triangles and everything. So yeah, I wanted to bring geometry to life basically in outfits. And you're from and India? I'm from India, and Mumbai. Does India actually inspire you when it comes to your designs and colors? Yeah, and it does. Um, I like to go with the very much hot couture Western things, but. As coming from the base of India, if you see most of the outfits and all, it'll have very traditional Indian work, also along with the Western touch to it. Uh, my name is Laura Grace D'Angeli, and I'm a swimsuit model, and now model in Hawaii. I'm originally from this area, New York City. Hawaii changed my life, and I'm here in New York for Couture Fashion Week. I was very lucky to model and walk the runway. Um, my girls back in Hawaii, all, they're all used to swimsuits, so it's nice to be in a gown for once. How was it actually being on the runway and feeling into the dress and the energy? And Amazing. That? It's it's. I felt beautiful. I felt like a woman. A swimsuit swimwear, it makes you feel very sexy. Oh, yes. Today, I felt like a lady. I feel beautiful. You, you always look beautiful, by the way. Thank it's you very, very much. Very, nice to meet you. Thank you. extremely divine, wonderful experience, a mixture of uh, couture, fashion, modernity, femininity, a wonderful experience. I'm pleased to have presented my femme bijou from Paris at the New York City Couture Fashion Week, Waldorf Astoria, a wonderful experience. television anchor for 25 countries between the Middle East and, and Africa. And, Africa. and he's also an international correspondent for uh, Middle East and Middle Eastern Network. So he's he's an anchor man. He's also an in the field correspondent. Uh, Rabah came in uh, after a long drive from uh, from the DC area. He heard about the system word of mouth. I gave him the general information that you all have, the waiver and everything. He didn't want to talk much. He came in seemingly tired, bent over like this. And I'm not exaggerating. He was bent at like a 45 degree angle and was walking with a clip clop gait. He went into the system for two hours. After his two hours was over, he stood up perfectly straight, almost as straight as I'm standing now, and walked straight forward to the bathroom. And we're all looking at him like, what just happened? Now I thought he just had a, a rough drive, and he was <laughs> stiff, or he was in some kind of accident. It was only then, after those two hours, that he told me his story. He had been reporting on the war in Afghanistan about about eight or nine years ago. I'm not sure of that time period. He told me 2005, so, so seven, seven years. Seven years. Um, and he was, was two, we, he was with two other reporters. Uh, they were up in the mountains, a wall of ice came down, they were trapped. Mm -hmm. One reporter died, and they were, uh, Rabah and his other colleague were medevaced out from city to city, nonstop until they got to D.C. Rabah had been in emergency or in, um, intensive care for seven months in the hospital a total of nine months, various <laughs> surgeries, treatments, he was unconscious for a while, he had suffered hypothermia. After he left the hospital, the one, his left side, 
was somewhat disabled, you know, due to uh, damage from the hypothermia, paralysis. Paralysis. So, so you know, you could see his, he wasn't using his facial muscles. That's why he came in, you know, in his position. After two hours in the system, he said he was 90% pain-free. He could feel a lot of tingling in his body. That's on the side that was damaged. And he felt happy. He came back the next week for six hours. At that point, people started to see a difference in the way he was moving, the way he was talking. He was able to be filmed with, a, with front on view from the camera, whereas before it was only from an angle, you know, for the functioning side of his face. And he came back for a second session, or a third session, six hours, the third week. And he's doing extremely well. He's happy. He can pick up his daughter without any pain in his back. Uh, he can go to the job and do his whatever he does and come home and have a normal life without having to go to bed for three or four hours to recover from his pain. So that's the story of Rabah. Uh, he just called me the other day. He left me a message. He's doing extremely well. He has some up days and down days, but overall, it's a miracle that happened to him. Is he reporting about the yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's Rabah's story after probably about 20 hours, 20 to 30 hours in the energy enhancement system. Well, <laughs> speaking of uh, reversing aging, Dr. Bob Delmantik, I used this picture first for a presentation in Turkey. Uh, I was asked to present the uh, symposium, or head up the Symposium for Healthy Aging as part of the first interna international care congress in Istanbul, Turkey. Now this was a congress with the heads of 60 nations and addressing the issues of population aging. And I was given an award by the head of science of Turkey from the Prime Minister's office at that event. Uh, Dr. Alex Kalechi, who was lecturing, and this was the Prime Minister who was Ministers of Health of 60 countries. He stood up and said, you know, the disease model, the medical model, pharmaceutical model worldwide is not working. <laughs> Our healthcare system is not sustainable. It doesn't work. He said, we have to create a new model. So right now in Turkey, they are building cities of health. Now they've had just asked me, a, I've heard back from the Prime Minister's office, from the Minister of Health, and they want me to be part of this Global Aging Council, and we're working with them also. But this was a picture that I brought, because to have healthy, productive aging, and this was another quote from Dr. Kalechi, we must be creating health at every age. Duh. Right? Anything and everything is either making you healthier or not. It's either supporting in your health, wellness, vitality, or not. Pretty simple. And you cannot expect to get healthier if you're still poisoning yourself. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah, and nobody has been drugged to health. <laughs> Nobody's suffering from, uh, you know, deficiencies of the drugs, <laughs> really. It's, how do we create health? So right now they're building holistic, um, organic, with all the indigenous uh, herbs and things like that in Turkey. So there's new models of how we're going to produce health. Because, but anyway, um, so so the other countries, it's it's good for you to know. I've been working with a lot of ministries of health worldwide that are are tired of being bullied by the pharmaceutical companies and tired of the. You know, and they're looking to create the new models. Like a lecture done no, last November, when November, November 11, 11, 11, sponsored by the Ministry of Health at a medical school conference, a conference of scientists, an international congress. And, um, and it was, they actually had me, after I did my scientific presentation, there was about 5,000 doctors and, and students, medical students, and they wouldn't let me leave the stage until I shared a, a Hawaiian chant. <laughs> this is sponsored by the Ministry of Health and the, and the medical schools, right? <laughs> and we did lead ceremony with a top Peruvian healer. The two of us led ceremony for the 11-11-11. Now, how come our government's not doing things like this, right? <laughs> how do we create health? 
Uh, and so we've got to make new pictures of what healthy aging looks like. And so that's why we use Bob Del Monte, 86 years old in that picture. Now, what do you want to be like? So you want to make a picture of what healthy aging looks like. You know, how do you want to be? <laughs> that's where you want to look at, by the fruit you know. You want to look at what creates the picture that you want. If you keep doing more of what you've been doing, what results you're going to get. Or if you keep eating or thinking how your mother thought, then you've got a picture of where that goes. Using the information, making healthier choices. That's what empowerment really is. And so with your energy, with your power, what do you want to create? So, you know, you know, are you choosing those things that really support you in your ultimate health, wellness, and vitality? Or have you been making choices that were, you know, sabotaging yourself? You know, you cannot expect to be super healthy if you're still poisoning yourself. You know, with addiction to abuse, literally. You know, and every dollar is a, vo a vote. What are you voting for on the planet? You have accountability. Are you voting for those things that heal the world, that heal the environment, or are you voting for those things that have been poisoning people? <laughs> or poisoning yourself, you're paying to poison yourself, but how poignant is that? <laughs> so you want to make better choices. I had the, some of the top brain um, mappers and brain researchers find that synchronized right and left brain hemispheres and took people into the ideal optimal meditational state. So in that meditational state, you want to make pictures of how you want your body to be, how you want your life to be. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Your thoughts create. And, you know, say your prayers, but, you know, what if every part of you, every organ, every cell, every part of you had all the energy you could possibly want or need to do anything and everything you could possibly want or need to do to fulfill your greatest life, your highest purpose. You know, ultimately you're here on purpose. Let's live your greatest life, no more excuses, without your energy being caught in dis-ease, you know. Let's create that total ease in the body so you can, you know, do everything you really want to do. So, you know, that's, so it goes beyond just that relaxation into the deep states. You're activating the cells, literally, turning up millivoltage, like recharging the cells. And it's a deeper meditational state. In literally minutes, whether you've meditated or not, a deeper meditational state, and it's better monk, and that's tested scientifically tested, you know, and they've been trained their whole lives to get to those states. So, and stress is what's behind any and every disease, all chronic diseases. It's all that cascade of events of the stress syndrome. You know, so degeneration, degenerative process, degenerative diseases is from chronic stress in the body and that breakdown of the system. So this totally reverses the whole stress. I mean, you go in there, most things, you know, the biggest thing in there is to go in, relax, take a nap. You know, but the whole body can relax and reset out of that fright, fright, or flight response, you know, the fright, fight, or flight reaction patterns, the fear reaction patterns, reset to being able to respond from a place of center and respond appropriately. You know, because all life is energy. You know, the power that made the body heals the body. But the cells, neurons, digestion, brain synapses, neurotransmitters, everything is firing, right? That's your cell membrane potential. And the, every cell is like a, a mini battery with that electrical current. That when your body is healthy, that current is meant to be, you know, really fired up. You know, energized. Your cells are like many batteries meant to be charged up, like hydrogen fuel cells, okay? And this is a hydrogen technology, hydrogen fusion technology. But hydrogen fuel cells charged up and, and amped up. When you're healthy, it's d designed to be at 70 to 90 millivolts. Well, cancer cannot exist in the body until that millivoltage is below 20. Everybody hear what that really means? Cancer cannot exist in a high energy body. Cancer cannot exist in an oxygenated system. It cannot exist in an alkaline, you know, you know, when the body's the proper pH. Well, to create that pH, that's your hydrogen potential. 
And the, this technology releases the active hydrogen and oxygen, so you've got all the benefits of, of an oxygen therapy. And hydrogen, which is the ultimate antioxidant and fuel for the cells. So, it's, you know, it's, it's really recharging every cell of the body one way or another. And, it, and it's such a bioactive charge. It's something that the body relates to. It grabs that energy and uses it. But the most effective and efficient way for your body to use the energy is the more you relax, the more the body can take and use the energy. That's why I say go in there and it's like take the ultimate um, you, you know, beauty rest or <laughs> the ultimate power nap, literally. And this is an infinity loop, which infinity lasts a long time, right? It's self-perpetuating, it's self-healing, it's self-regenerating by nature, which is how the body is designed to be. Because our actual nervous system, our neurological functioning, is all scale based. It's all this infinity wave based. That's the double helix of the DNA relates to that. So, you know, scalar potential, what this means is essentially that coming together of these wave pairs, phase conjugate wave pairs, and that when they come together, that coupling or that combining allows that release or emission of, of charge. So you could also see this as a phase conjugate wave pairs. It's a conjugal relationship. Or you can see it as, you know, God and God is coming together. <laughs> and it's this orgasmic release of energy. Um, which are, you know, you want to, it's like plugging every cell back into that cosmic light socket where every cell, every part of you can be reconnected to the infinite innate intelligence where you can just know everything there is to know, you know, which allows all things to clear as issues in your body. What if your body had all the energy you could possibly want to need? And what if you could know everything there is for you to know, the knowing which allows all things to be totally clear as issues in your body, your life, your relationship, and for the whole world now? What could, how would that be? Yeah, so it's a matter of giving yourself permission to get those visions and hold the visions for your life and for our world. You know, most of the time with the cancers and things that people, they, I, I had one woman make the mistake that she had been getting mammograms and there was this, you know, tumor that she had had and when she went back they couldn't find it. So they did eight mammograms trying to find the tumor. <laughs> and it was completely gone. But they were so sure it would be there. So I would not recommend, I said, you let them do what? You know, because mammograms are high radiation, it's tissue damage. They know that mammograms will cause cancer because, because of the radiation. That's why you, were, you, know, you use the thermography. You know, thermography is a safe thing to use. Do not do mammograms. So I couldn't believe they let her, they, she let them do that many mammograms. But this is something we've heard a lot, that they just can't find the tumor. It must have been a misdiagnosis, because they, they clear. Um, you know, we've had them go from the size of a walnut to the size of a pea, in a matter of typically about three sessions, things like that. So interesting stuff. So we like when we hear that it's a misdiagnosis for cancer. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's a field engine system, so this is some of the science. So the, the greater fields are off the units themselves. And then you've got the intersection of the fields. This is a field engine generator, the way we're using it. Everything is custom built to do those fields. And then off the screens, you have the photonic emission. And so you, that's where you get that. And they're precisely, precisely aligned with the laser to within a very, um, within a hundredth of an inch, so we try to align them that precisely. The more precisely they're aligned, the better it works. Because you can imagine if there's one thing off, it would create a wobble or a distortion in the field. So when you're in there, please try not to bump them. <laughs> Although uh, Karen does um, have the laser alignment kit for keeping it aligned. But that's why you want to keep it as precisely aligned as possible.
because it's the intersection of those fields where those fields come together, literally, that combine, creates that combination. It's very stable. It creates that standing polymer wave, but at the intersection of fields, we have this 360 degree sphere of energy that goes out. And, so, and it's generating multiple bioactive fields, including um, maybe some of you have heard of pulse electromagnetic field therapy, PEMF. It's generating those fields, but also including all the benefits of scalar or true bioscalar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it also includes the Schumann resonance, the earth energy. Maybe some of you have heard of earthing or grounding or just that sense of being very grounded. When you go in there, you feel your, your feet being kind of grounded to the earth. You know, want you to be fully in your body. But it's, there's a lot of research being done with earthing, which is about grounding to the Schumann resonance, the earth energies. And so the research that they've done with earthing also is like one of the first things that applies to this technology. There, there is a book, and Dr. Um, Stephen Sinatra talks a lot about earthing. Also, um, you know, so David Wolf talks about earthing a lot. But this, it's a way of grounding because these are the frequencies, the body is of the earth. And it needs to reground to those frequencies that it was originally designed to function in. So that's one of the benefits that you're getting is that Schumann resonance. And then also the rainforest energies. It's 13.814 is rainforest energy. So it's creating just this hyper healthy environment. You know, hyper healthy environment. That creates a nullification of all the detrimental destructive fields. So, you know, and then the other frequencies, the definition of scalar is nonlinear, non Hertzian, fifth dimensional scalar fields or standing fields or standing columnar waves, which have been proven to promote regeneration. Okay. Um, so, the bioscalar technology is transmuting the 60 cycle and the, and the other detrimental destructive fields, even 60 cycle, which is your electric, you know, electrical outlets, etc. even that, just the electrical energy, is stressing the cells, flipping them at a faster rate that will break down immune function to the degree that even just 60 cycle would eventually cause cancer in the body. It's that detrimental and harmful a field. And it's one of the least harmful of what we're dealing with. And now we've got an electro pollution, you know, just an electro smog uh, between the Wi Fi, the EMF, the ELF, the radio waves, the television waves, but all the Wi Fi, and then the smart meters on top of it. And then, then, then we have, <laughs> you know, your, your cell phone that's not a non ionizing radiation. And then we have the ionizing radiation from Fukushima for example. Because there's a lot of disease that, you know, that's following. Hypothyroidism is being created. Uh, people are getting um, heart palpitations. Uh, accelerated aging is what's created with the, with the breakdown of our communication, because these are communication waves that are breaking down the communication in the body to such an extent of creating major stress and disease sleep disturbances because these things are broadcasting off your houses 24-7. For all, I would like to uh, repeat our uh, deepest gratitude for all what you have done from the very beginning of your tenure until today in favor of uh, cultural peace, this very, very radical transition from a culture based on domination, imposition, force and violence to a culture based on uh, dialogue conciliation and uh, non-violence. We need to bring in some of these essential elements which makes the 
the foundation of human society. Forgiveness, reconciliation, spirituality. These things need to come in into our work. We need to think more solidly about those things. I mean, I think a culture of peace is exactly this, this moment here where Rebecca and I together share. We share moments together, and that's among all people. Azim Kamisa, who lost his only son to senseless gang violence. And after 40 days of grieving, his spiritual teacher told him, it's time to stop grieving and to live, promote peace in your son's name. And Azim Kamisa has touched millions of people. Let the young people radiate within their hearts, within their consciousness of who they really are, and they will achieve the balance of life. I wish to congratulate the President of the General Assembly for convening the high-level forum on the culture of peace. The Prime Minister called for a global movement of the moderates, or GMM, in short. In essence, this was made on the belief that the future would not be one between the East and West, between developed and developing countries, nor between different faiths. We see it in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where women are saying, let's not challenge the consequences of war, but the root causes, the links to natural resources in our country, the proliferation of arms. And it's amazing the changes that it makes when people work together as one unit, fighting for a single cause and that's to share the love of a mother. Standing together within this space that we've created, let us realize we're together here on a land that belongs to no one nation, but to all nations.